Hi there, my name is Nils and this video is about how to frame a room. We're going to take a look at this room that's in my basement. I've already framed some of the other rooms in this basement. Um, this is in my new house and I framed the basement and finished the basement in my last house. I just want to show you that it's really not that difficult to get started and do it yourself. You're going to need a few tools and things to get started, but let's go ahead and dive into um, how to get started framing a new room. The first thing we're going to want to do is take a look at the area that we're working with and see if there are any obstructions or anything we're going to have to work around. And in this room, um, we've got a window as you can see, and then we've got um, this pipe here, four inch uh, drain pipe that goes down to the, um, underneath the foundation. Um, I've got another four inch pipe here, and this one is a little more difficult because it actually will interfere with the top plate of this wall. So I'm gonna have that to work around. And then over here, I've got my air ducts and then a water pipe. So I've got, um, sorry, my gas pipe. So I've got that to work around with, or to work around. So we're gonna have to create a soffit in this room up on the top. And then over here where the door is gonna go, which is just this area here, I've got a, um, the air duct again. So I'm gonna have to do a lower door. So also this is a, a load bearing wall right here in the middle of the house with these two by sixes. And so I wanna make sure that I'm not gonna do anything to, to cut into that or interfere with that because that does have to remain in place. Um, and other than that, the room is going to be pretty straightforward. So part of this video will be showing you how to do, um, how to frame a window, how to frame a door, how to frame standard walls. And then over here, um, we've actually got the area that the um, walk-in closet is going to go. So we'll take a look at how to do a double door frame on that. And then you can kind of see up here, we've got a little bit of a, um, another drain pipe. That's the P-trap for the drain pipe from upstairs and we'll work around that as well. So there's always, you know, every room, every wall is gonna be a little bit different, but take a look and make sure you kinda of get a feel for what it is that you're up against and what you'll have to work with. All right, I've decided we're gonna start with this wall behind me, and the first thing I need to do is prepare um, a place to fasten the top plate of the, of the wall that we're about to build. You can kinda of see, hopefully in this video, that the uh, ceiling joists are running side to side, and in order for me to um, have something for that top plate to fasten to, I'm gonna need to put some boards in here, some, some studs, and I'll just cut them the distance from here to here, measure those out, and then I wanna put those every two feet on center. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do is just get a bunch of these cut, count them out, um, I'll get those cut out, and then put those every two feet on center using my um, nail gun for framing. Now, depending on your situation, if you're just gonna be framing one room, for example, it might not make sense to set up a whole uh, work uh, station like this for your chop saw. If you're gonna be doing uh, several rooms, or especially if you're gonna be doing a whole floor or a basement, it definitely makes sense to get some stations set up so that you, you can use your uh, workhorses and then whatever lumber you need. I've got my saw um, fastened down to these, um, to these two by six screen plates. And then I've also got stoppers over here that are raised up so that I can have a nice flat surface um, so I can lay down my boards. And then I've also got a whole bunch of extra um, pieces from my other uh, rooms that I've framed so far that will be big enough to do some of these little cross members that I'm cutting right now. Um, one other tip, if you've got a lot of pieces of wood, it's nice to use them to write down the measurements so you don't have to try to remember anything. Um, always better to measure twice and cut once. And so I'm gonna go ahead and quickly um, run through this list and make these cuts. All right, to tack these up here, I've got this one, which is pretty snug, which is great. I'm gonna put it pretty close to where the end of my wall is. And then with the nail gun, I'm just gonna drive it in. Okay. And then on this side, I can't go, come through from this side, so I'm just gonna toenail it in. I'm gonna push this uh, plastic back so I can see what I'm doing and then toenail that guy in. It's kind of harder to do from this side, so I'm gonna to have to do one from the bottom, and then I'll just nail or use my hammer to hit that flush with the board. Same thing on my next one. All right, so we've got our cross members in place now, and the next part we're gonna to need to do is actually get this wall built. There's two, two schools of thought on how to do this. Um, if you have the space on your floor, one of the easier ways to do it is to actually build the wall out on the floor, and that way you can actually um, drive the nails through the bottom plate and through the top plate and into the studs. It just makes it quick and, and easier to do it that way. You just measure everything, lay it out on the floor, get all your boards cut, lay it out, and then tack it together and erect it in place and kind of slide it in. And then you can just tack the top and then 
run your RAM set nails through the bottom, which we'll show you in a minute. The other method is to actually go ahead, and sometimes you have to do this if you don't have the floor space or depending on obstructions that are around, sometimes you have to put the top plate up, put the bottom plate down, and then put each stud in individually as you go. And that's fine too. Um, where we can, I like to go ahead and, and construct the wall on the floor. So the next step is to figure out how far away from um, this concrete and from our vapor barrier and insulation is the uh, wall going to be that we're going to construct on this side so that I can measure this wall properly. And so I've already gone through and measured that out and I'm just going to have this one a couple inches off the concrete that's behind here. And so I've, I've got a mark on the floor, so I'm going to go ahead and measure how long this wall is going to be. I'm get my measuring tape in the corner here. Okay. So that puts us at 165 and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my pressure treated lumber. I've got a, some 16 foot boards of pressure treated lumber. I'm going to cut one of those at 165 and a half. And then I don't have 16 foot two by fours. I only have eight foot two by fours. If you've got 16 footers, which are ideal for your top joist, then go ahead and use those. Um, if you don't, we're going to have to put two together, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put two together so they equal 165 and a half. We'll lay those down on the floor and we'll get some measurements and we'll catch you back up right there. Okay, one thing I almost forgot about is um, there's a certain rule in the code that you have to actually have a fire stop up on top of the walls so that fire doesn't get in through the walls and then get back up in there. So what I've, what I've been using for that, there's, you can actually use several different materials that are considered compliant for that. So check the code in your area and see if you have to do this. My guess is that most areas require the same thing. But I've been taking this OSB uh, board and then I removed the, uh, just cut the, through the staples and the plastic here and then shove that back up in the wall and then I'm going to have to go around afterward with um, some insulation, like foam insulation, and make sure it's all sealed off. And that way, there's a really good tight seal between um, the floor joists and the wall, the top wall plate. And then I'm up to code and I'm ready to go. So that actually serves two purposes, though. One, it gets you up to code. Two, it makes it easier when you uh, build a wall on the floor and then move it in. It makes it easier so you don't have to wedge the thing in so much. It actually kind of helps out. All right, now that we've got our fire stop in place and we're up to code, that's great. Um, we've already cut our top plate and bottom plate on the floor here. And so now the next part is pretty easy. The reason why I've got them stacked on top of each other is, is because um, we'll take the distance between the top plate and the fire stop up here, or if you don't have to have a fire stop, then your ceiling joist, and that's gonna be the measurement of the studs that we're gonna cut. Uh, it's the same as if we had had the top plate up in place and we we're getting the distance between them. It all works out. What I find is easiest is actually just making a wall that's the, sta the same height all the way across, and I like to leave a about an eighth of an inch or so shorter than it actually needs to be so that it can slide in place just fine. So first thing we're gonna do is just get measurements of all of these. The easiest way to measure this is just to go ahead and bend your um, measuring tape, get plenty of it ready. And I've just got eight foot ceilings down here, so these aren't too bad. If you have nine or 10 foot ceilings, then um, this comes in especially handy. So you're just gonna make sure this is all the way down and then get your measurement um, from the board this thing will stay straight, uh, to wherever you're gonna measure to, which in my case is the fire stop. And it looks like I've got about 88 and three quarters there. And then you're gonna go through and measure repeatedly throughout, about every 16 inches. And then you're gonna just kinda mentally keep track of what your lowest measurement is, and then your range. So if you've got something that measures, for example, from 88 and three quarters up to 89, for example, then you're wanna, gonna wanna do 88 and three quarters, subtract about an eighth of an inch so that you can slide it into place without having to smash it into place. And then that's what you're gonna cut your, wall, your uh, studs at. Okay, now that we've got our measurements um, for the studs, we can go ahead and mark our top plate and bottom plate uh, with the location of each stud. This is pretty simple. We're gonna start in the corner and we need to make sure that we have one stud that goes right in the corner. The reason we have that is so that when we hang sheetrock, we have an uh, end piece to, to um, screw the sheetrock to right in the very corner. Lay this whole thing out all the way to the end here. And then I'm gonna put a mark on every 16 inch mark all the way down the line. Okay, now that we have our 16 inch marks all along the board, 
I've just gone, gone ahead and made my first mark across both boards. So on the end, we're going to have a, a stud right here. So I'm going to put an X on this side just to indicate that the stud goes there. I've drawn my first line across right here. And then because uh, that's 16 inches there, we want our stud on, on the left side of that. So I'm going to mark that with an X. Just going to draw this across and then exit and then go all the way down the line. I just wanted to point out on the opposite end of where we started, um, we're always going to want to have a stud in the corner like I mentioned. So I'm just going to go ahead and put another X right there. Even though we've got a stud right there, I still like to keep them on 16s to keep up with code. And so we're going to end up having two studs pretty close to one another, but I always like to have one in the corner. So again, so we have the sheetrock. When we hang sheetrock, we have something to screw right into. All right, now that we've got our lines made all the way down the board, we're just going to count them up and then we'll know how many studs we have to cut at the measurement we came to before, which I think was 88 and 5 eighths. Okay, a couple of quick tips about getting uh, a whole set of studs cut like this. There's a few things you can do to make life easier. So uh, one thing I've done is I've um, lined up all of one end. And that way I can just get one measurement instead of trying to measure each board. So I can take this all the way down to my 88 and 5 eighths uh, right here. And I'm going to mark this on that board and on this board. Okay. And then I'm going to take my speed square again and use that to get my, to mark it across. And then I'll bring that down the side of each of these. And that way I just have, I have my, uh, my measurement marked on the side. So when I take it to the chop saw, I'm ready to, there we go. I can see my mark on each one of these. While these are lying down, let's go ahead and get these, these holes drilled. So what I mean by that is um, if you take a look here, you can see I've got the holes drilled um, about two feet up on all of the studs in the, in the framing that I've done so far. And what that does is makes it so that when you put your outlets in about one foot up, off the ground, um, then your wiring is all ready to go. You can just feed the wires through, put the outlets on, and connect it up. So back onto this pile, I'm going to cut this pile in half. Now that I've got my, whoops, now that I've got my um, distance marked, I'm just going to go ahead and cut this pile into sets of three. Now the nice thing about these is the measurements don't have to be exact for the holes. You want them to be pretty close, but they don't have to be totally perfect. If they're off an inch or whatever, that's really not going to be a big deal. So I'm going to mark that right there. So one other item I needed to make a quick note of, um, in case you're in the same situation I was in, I was using this older master mechanic uh, variable speed drill. Um, this is a four amp drill and it's just not as powerful as it ought to be for drilling through studs and things like that with a one inch bit. I went to Home Depot and for 60 bucks picked up a DeWalt. Uh, this is an eight amp. Check out the difference um, from the videos you just saw of me going through those wood, uh, those studs to what it looks like now with a, uh, an eight amp drill. Wow, that is night and day difference. So, Again, if you can get a, an 8 amp drill, I definitely recommend that for doing this part, which will save you time later on um, when you're running all your electrical wiring. All right, I had to stop there on Saturday. Uh, it's a couple days later now and I'm ready to keep on framing. Um, I've got my boards ready. They've got their holes drilled out for the electrical work to be wired through. And when you're getting your, your boards laid out, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Most studs have somewhat of an arc to them. So they're gonna have a curve one way or the other for the most part. They might be pretty straight. If they are, that's great. But what we wanna do is check each stud by eyeing down the corner of it. So I'm just gonna hold this thing straight. This one's actually pretty straight kind of goes like this a little bit, but um, it, more, it curves up more than anything else. And just, you want to be consistent with w the direction that the studs are curving. So in this case, I want to keep all my studs pointing up because if you had one going this way and one going that way, then sheet rocking is going to be a nightmare and it's going to be bowed and look pretty bad. So, um, and then if you do have any that are really bad, then don't include them. You can um, save those and cut them into smaller pieces for headers or for other pieces that you're going to use. Um, if it's pretty bad, then I wouldn't recommend using it on a full-size wall like this. So I'm just going to go through and check each board. 
see if it's straight and which way it's curving, okay? And then line them up. Now on the on my uh, my bottom plate and my top plate here, I've got my marks. So I can just put this, I've already got my X lined out here. So I'm just gonna put each stud up to the X and then I know it's in place on the top plate, bottom plate. That'll keep the walls nice and straight and I'll be ready to go. So I'm just gonna lay out the rest of this wall and we'll take it from there. All right, now for this next part, we're gonna go ahead and use our framing nailer to tack in two nails, one toward the top, one toward the bottom of each stud. We're gonna go right through the bottom plate and then do the same thing on the other side, go right through the top plate. So just make a nice pattern all the way down the row and also just make sure to line this up. Like this green plate here is a little bit bowed up, so I'm just gonna um, push it down a little bit to make sure that it is as level as possible with the stud that I'm connecting it to. I've got two sections here because I had to cut that around this pipe. So I'm probably going to have to, this is more of a two person job, but if it's just you, I'm just going to get this one started and then I'll have to come over and grab this other one. So getting this wall in was definitely a little bit of a pain. So once I lifted the wall up and was able to scoot it in, I had to work around um, the air ducts and then also work around my gas line. And then I also had to cut in um, where this pipe was, both on the top and on the bottom, and then make sure to keep my, uh, the bottom plate still straight and in line, same with the top plate. Um, then once you get your wall roughly in place, just eyeball it and see if it looks like it's about there. Um, you can use a hammer or your foot or whatever you need to to um, kind of kick the bottom of the plate into place and same thing with the hammer on the top and try to get it to where it's about level. Then that's where you're going to want a good long level like this so that you can check out the um, studs to make sure they're level in both directions. So most importantly you're going to want to make sure that they're level um, top to bottom, okay? And so that the wall is not leaning out toward you or leaning in against the wall. Um, or against the foundation, so you're going to want to check that. And then you're also going to want to check it um, vertically to make sure that, it's, that your top plate isn't shifted over to one side or the other. So by putting the, the level on the stud like this, you can see if it's actually level um, in both directions. Okay, now that we've got our wall in place, it's nice and level, we're ready to go ahead and fasten it, the uh, bottom plate and the top plate um, to the ceiling and the floor. So We've got uh, a pretty simple process for doing the top plate. You're going to use your nail gun and drive a couple of nails between each uh, set of studs. And then um, we'll do that all the way down the length and then we'll show you how to do the bottom as well. All right, now to secure the green plate, the bottom plate, down to the concrete, what we're going to use is a ram set. A ram set is just basically a gunpowder activated hammer. I mean, you just la load a 22 caliber shell in here that you buy with the ramp set, put that in the shaft there, and then you have these special nails that have a little uh, rubber holder on them so that they can stay in place. You just load them in there like that. Um, go ahead and line it up and push that uh, handle down, and then you use your hammer just to act as the trigger essentially. Okay, and that'll drive it nice and far down in there. If it doesn't go 100% down, that's probably fine. You just want to make sure that it's going to be down into the concrete enough to get a good hold. And then eject that shell, and you're ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and do that all, the, all along the board. All right, and with that, we've got our first wall in place. Um, we've already got a bathroom wall in this, in this room, and so the next one we're going to tackle is this one here with the window. So most of the same rules apply. We're going to apply our stud 16 inches on center, and then let's go ahead and take a look at how we're going to frame out the window. There are some special ways we have to do that to make sure that it's secure and supported, and also that it's up to code.